Hey everybody, hope this finds you doing well. This is Danelle at Network Chain. Today we're going to go over the cryptocurrency market, what's happened over the past seven days, and how the spot Bitcoin ETFs, now that they've had a week of trading, how that has potentially affected the cryptocurrency market. As usual, let's go ahead and start with the update. Bitcoin currently trading at over $41,000 is down 2.5% over the past week. Ethereum also down over 2% at about 2.76% currently trading at $2,432. And because Bitcoin is the tide that rises all boats, if Bitcoin begins to run, then usually all coins begin to run soon thereafter. Or vice versa, if Bitcoin starts to go down, then a lot of the altcoins begin to bleed a little bit more than Bitcoin. As you can see here in the top 10, Solana is trading just under 7% over the past seven days, now under $90 at $89.58. You have XRP down over 7% trading at 54 cents, Cardano down 6.6%, trading just a shade under 50 cents, Dogecoin at 8 cents, it's actually up nearly 2% over the last 7 days, and then we have Avalanche currently trading at below 11%, over the past week trading at $32.09. So we are looking at the spot Bitcoin ETFs and you can see here, this is the list of the 11 ETFs that are now trading on the open market. And we are looking at the fee structure here. You can see the lowest priced fee is Bitwise. And I believe now Franklin Templeton has lowered their price or their fee, I should say, to 0.19%. I'm not sure if that's for a short period of time or not. Some of these are also doing 0% over the first several months or until they get $1 billion in assets under management for that particular ETF. I know Bitwise is one of them, ARK as well, and iShares as well is starting off with a 0% fee. But you can see here that the one that is the largest is Grayscale, the GBTC Bitcoin Trust. Trust, which was now converted to an ETF is currently trading at 1.5%. And many people are speculating a reason why Bitcoin has started to come down is because of the fact that Grayscale has needed to sell off Bitcoin due to a lot of their investors redeeming their shares now that it has been converted to an ETF. And so they're seeing a lot of outflow from our understanding and from the numbers. They have had over $2 billion in the first, I believe it's what, six trading days that we've had now they've had over 10 billion dollars of outflows come out of the trust or now out of the etf and we're starting to see a lot of inflow into some of the other etfs i shares the blackrock uh, ETF has had over a billion dollars of volume and trading for their particular Bitcoin trust. Uh, Fidelity has done very well as well. I believe they're nearing a billion if they haven't crossed that threshold. And some of the other ones have done a few hundred million as well. So we're seeing that with these outflows and inflows coming in that most people are looking at the first few days or several days of trading as being really a success generally speaking we're seeing as you can see BlackRock is seeing a lot of inflow this is just from the first three days we see that iShares did a total of nearly 1 billion or closing in on a billion at the time this was just under the first three days of trading they traded at over 700 million had that inflow come in Fidelity had over 500 million Bitwise, which is a crypto-based uh, fund, is over 300 and ARC over 200. And you can see here, Grayscale had an outflow of over a billion just in those first three days. So we're starting to see where those funds are potentially going since a lot of people are looking to find an ETF that has a lower fee. And some people are just also looking to take profit because the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust for a long time, particularly most of 2022, was trading at a discount. And then that discount started to shrink going into 2023. And it shrunk all the way up leading into the Grayscale uh, conversion from the Bitcoin trust to the ETF. So a lot of people are definitely taking those profits and also potentially going into lower fee um, ETFs now. So we'll still 
continue to monitor over the next several weeks to really get an understanding of the net flows both in and out of these Bitcoin ETFs. But it has been a success in terms of, you can see combined volumes of roughly $10 billion going into the BTC funds, not including uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. You can see that it accounted for about half of the volumes total. The fund has seen $1.2 billion. That was just, like I said, in the first three days. And you can see that BlackRock carries a fee of 0.25 compared to the Grayscale fee of 1.5%. So here is a Bitcoin ETF tracker. We have spot Bitcoin ETFs as well as futures. The Bitto by ProShares, it has done fairly well. It has over $2 billion in assets under management. Then you have the spot Bitcoin ETFs that are also doing quite well. Grayscale at the time had over $2 billion, $28 billion, excuse me, in assets under management. We have now seen that I believe it's nearly $2 billion now over the first six days that has been taken out of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. So it's just under 10%. We'll continue to see if we see more outflows coming out from that trust. If that's the case, there's definitely some selling pressure. So that may be part of the reason why Bitcoin went from its $49,000 high the first day of trading, and it has now come down to that $41,000, $42,000 range. So definitely we'll be keeping you guys posted on what's happening with Bitcoin over these next several weeks, if it's going to continue to stay above $40,000, or will it potentially break down a little bit going into the Bitcoin halving, which is still slated for the end of May, potentially going into the end of April, excuse me, potentially going into the beginning of May. So you can go here to blockrooks.co slash Bitcoin dash ETF. And this is the tracker just to give you the status and the um, a little bit more info relevant basic information with each ETF that is currently on the open market. And just a quick reminder that we still have NFTs that are trading and they are seeing a spike in volume. As you can see overall, we had gone into a bear market from the middle of June and we can see that we are coming back up a little bit on an upward trend, excuse me, since last summer. And you can also see that Blur has really basically overtaken OpenSea and any other uh, platforms when we talk about Ethereum, particularly NFT trading. These are charts related to Ethereum NFTs, which is still the largest NFT marketplace currently, but Solana at one time actually had more NFT volume than Ethereum. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye out on that as well. But people are still buying and selling NFTs. Many people are saying that NFTs are dead forever. We don't believe that. We actually believe that NFTs are going to expand much more than just being JPEGs traded on, you know, a third party platform. It's going to become in a, ver a variety of different forms from, you know, being able to have your house as an NFT, being able to have various tokenized assets. You can tokenize your home. You'd be able to tokenize, you know, your electronic equipment, your collectibles, not just, you know, digital JPEGs. They can also be digitized using the blockchain for and represent um, assets in relation to your physical objects. So NFTs definitely have a long way to go. There's a lot of industries that could potentially be disrupted by the blockchain and non-fungible tokens still developing and evolving as we speak, but we can see that they're not completely dead, even though we are still about 10% of the all-time high volume for NFTs, which in the middle and beginning of 2022 was upwards of $1 billion in weekly volume, which is amazing. So we are still in, I believe, around that 100 to $150 million range. So we're still way short of that. But we believe that we definitely could be seeing upwards of $500 million 
into the end of the year potentially and maybe even more. You never know in this market. So continue to stay tuned here at Network Chain. We thank you so much for watching us and for your support. We'll continue to bring you these weekly videos on YouTube and continue to track how these Bitcoin ETFs will affect the cryptocurrency market as we go into the halving. But in the meantime, make sure you do your due diligence. Take care. We look forward to linking up with you on the network chain. Bye-bye.